Yeah, y'all see that green sticker? Green sticker mean it's fresh. When you got a black sticker, that mean it's old. I don't play by mine. So when I come in here, I tell them, give me one of them sausage biscuits with a green sticker. I don't no black sticker. It's old junk. Y'all think y'all getting old. You ain't getting old on me. I ain't gonna let you. I ain't gonna let you. Look, I want to put this video out here this morning. I got something on my mind, I, and I feel people need to hear this. Lord, please bless this uh, unhealthy sausage biscuit. Look. If you don't like your angle, cut the video off. <laughs> I don't care. Look, this is what I'm about to say. I need y'all to listen. Look. Mm-hmm. 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 Listen. Your full-time job Hold on. Look, this is what I wanted to say. Your full-time job is your business partner. Working with two guys a day. Now, when we come in on night shift, we have to get set up. Once the supervisor give us our job, we got to go find lines to work with, ladder, whatever we may need. We got to get all out. It takes a good hour and a half to get set up right and it's it's a constant pressure because we're only working five and a half hours so it's an hour and a half to get set up then you got to make a showing after you get get set up showing what all you got done and a lot of guys get aggravated because they, they don't get set up fast enough they run into problems oh man i just go home And I'm telling them, look, man, you are getting paid by the hour. There's no need to go home. You're still getting paid. I understand you running your business and everything falling apart. Screw it. We'll try it tomorrow. And, like, for instance, they'll get mad. And like I say, just leave early. Like I, I was telling one guy, I said, bro, you get paid regardless whether you get set up or not, whether how much you get done. Listen, I'm going to be honest. The job I work at, it is so easy to start a business, create a business, or do, or even go back to school. People use the current job I have as a stepping stone. Entrepreneurs use this job for stepping stone. Some say, hey, I'm just going to move up in the company. It's not a bad paying job. Look, I'm about to drop some real numbers on y'all after I get over from this car. They driving too slow. The, the job I'm on, they pay $29 an hour. Second shift, get a dollar more, they get $30 an hour. By me being a welder, I can go in there and work seven days a week all the overtime I want. Right? <clears throat> now, this particular job, they are tied in good with the credit union. They will give you a loan for whatever it is you want to buy. Don't tell them you're starting a business. They're not going to give you a loan for that. Okay. If you want to go in there and say, hey, I want this truck. It costs $40,000. They'll be like, all right. Truck note to be $600 a month. We'll take $150 a week out your paycheck. And people and people will be like, oh, that's fine. Cool. I ain't got to pay it. It's coming directly out my check. All right? So then you want a house. House note, $1,200 a month. All right, cool. That's $300 a week coming out your check. You know, they would do that. Because in your mind, what the world is this? Man, what is this? Because, see, in your mind, you're going to work every day anyway. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
my truck note come out my check, my mortgage come out my check. All that I gotta do is pay utilities. So long as I go to work and work overtime, I'm good. All right, but I'm about to show y'all something. You can use the same credit union to fund your business or your side hustle. It's a guy I work with, he's a welder like me. He works consistently seven days a week. Guess what he did? He still stayed home with his parents, no kids, no wife, I think he got a girlfriend. He Right now he is currently sitting on three rental properties, right? The way he done it, <clears throat> uh, got his first rental property, all right, got that one going and flowing, saved up some money, went and got a, he didn't, he didn't, he, 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 what he did with that house, he took out like a, he took out like a mortgage like he buying it, right? And when he bought that house, he bought that house from another guy that had rental properties. Somebody was currently already renting it out. So when he bought it, he instantly had a tenant. So I say he waited maybe a year. Then he went back to the same bank and got a personal loan. Got the person loan, put it with some more money he had, then got another mortgage loan. So yeah, I don't understand how he done all this because I'm not hip to the game on all this. So y'all may know more than me. I'm just kind of giving you the gist of what he told me of what all the story I remember. So he currently right now have three rental properties, still go to work seven days a week. So he got the seven day a week check coming in and then he got the rental property checks coming in. He said he don't plan on leaving a full-time job. He's just going to stay there, stack up, and just keep buying rentals. You have to view your full-time job as your business partner. Don't cheat your business partner. Allow your business partner to bring as much money to the table as it can until, it's, until, it, comes to, until it comes down to a point where you no longer need your business partner because then now your business partner is in the way. I'm going to give you another example. I'm really making this video so I can stay woke. I'm trying to make it home. I'm going to fall asleep driving. It was a guy I watched on YouTube. I'm not going to say his name because I don't have the right to speak on it. But I'm just going to speak on this situation. He went to prison for 10 years. Whatever. He went to, he went to, he went to jail twice. When he was young in his 20s. And then a little, a little bit, he did like a two-year stint the first go around. So you ain't really learn that. You come back out, you do the same thing. Then you get really, then you get sent up. Then you get sent to the uh, federal penitentiary. Like you said, the first time he got locked up, it was a robbery. Then the second time, it was drugs. But he got caught with a lot of drugs, so you had to go do federal time. He said the, the difference between state prison and federal prison. State prison is a lot of blue collar. Uh, class of people in the federal it's a lot of white collar so you'll have people that have million dollars comp million dollar companies but in embezzled millions more of dollars <clears throat> and they can tell you the ins and out on how to start a business how to do this how to do that well anyway he learned this game from a guy that used to have uh, a trucking company and you and, and he and it was like man if you was making this much money trucking why was you moving drugs with your trucking company he said because you get to a point where enough is it's never enough. But anyway, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is this. The guy applied himself, learned everything he needed to learn from that guy about the trucking industry. He said while he was in prison, he was able to get his CDL Class C license. I didn't know CDLs went from A, B to C. That's what he said. I don't know if he's right or wrong. That's not my line of field of work. So he said he was able to get his Class C or Class B, whatever. It wasn't the top one. So when he got out, he was able to secure a job with a uh, garbage company. And the host asked him, he said, man, they didn't catch you had a criminal record. He said, nah, when you got a CDL, they'll hire you as long as it's not a, a heinous crime. He said, so what I did, I knew I already had a plan that I wanted to start my own trucking company. He said, so I used this trash truck job as my business partner to fund my business. He said, now it didn't happen in a month, didn't happen in a year. It took maybe two years. Within a five five span, over five years, I'm gonna tell you what transpired in five years. He went from his full-time job to owning 20, either 25 or 30 18-wheeler trucks and 30 trailers. I don't know if it's the flatbed trailers, the boxes. He said there's no 
refrigerated units. It's just regular whatever it is. And the guy said, well, break it down, man. How did you do it? He said, you know, I get that question all the time to the fact why I started teaching classes on this. He said, it's nothing hard. It's all simple. It's all work and grind. He said, nobody wants to work anymore. This is what he said. He said, my trash job was paying me $500 a day. No, no, I'm sorry, a week. He said, I was making $500 a week driving the trash truck. He said, so I saved my money, saved my money, saved my money, saved my money. Then he said he saved up maybe like $10,000 or whatever. However long that took, that's what he did. So then he went to, you know how you go to a car lot and buy a... Uh, now, over the course of the time, he was getting his stuff set up. You know, he was he was getting his business license. He upgraded his CDL. Like I said, I don't know nothing about that. He had everything in motion. All the thing he needed was the truck, the trailer, the the connect, and that was it. So he said he saved up his money, saved up ten grand, went to a lot. They had a truck, but he couldn't afford the truck. Still, he went and got financed, and they told him, "Hey, you got to give us ten thousand. No, it wasn't ten thousand down. It was." Maybe like five or six, because he said his truck was only like thirty-five or forty thousand, like forty something thousand. It was like, look, this is how much the truck worth. This is how much you approved for, and this is how much you putting down. You still can't afford the truck, but I look at it. It was nothing but God. That's how I see this. I'm sorry, and listening to this man's story just just lit a fire in me. But anyway. The guy was like, look, man, we'll take this much off so you can afford the truck. So he was able to buy his truck. Not no trailer, just the truck itself. And he was showing pictures of him. You know how you see them pictures back in the day? Somebody just got their first little, you know, whatever. And an interviewer asked him, like, okay, so now you got your, um, you got your, um, your truck. So now it was on. He said, so now what, what did you, he said, what step did you make next? He said, all right, after I got my truck, I still didn't have a trailer, so it was back to the trash company to try to save some more money he said but I, I knew a guy that let me use his trailer and the other guy and the guy that was act, interviewing him saying did, did you rent it from him because he act the guy asked good questions for anybody like somebody like me with just a full-time job i can do this so he was like nah man he said he gave me that trailer off the street he said hey man use this trailer he said he gave it to me off the street use this trailer Get on your feet. He said, and not only that, the guy hooked me up with with a load. I don't look, I don't look, I don't know none of this terminology. I'm just saying what he said. Hooked me up with a load board. What he explained the load board was you connect with these people, third party company, they pay you. I don't know. But anyway, he was driving for a grocery store, delivering food from store to store to store to store. He said, and they paid you as soon as you was done. He said, look, when I connected with them, he said it was on. He said, I slept in that truck. I slept in the, he said, I would go to this grocery store, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. He said, it's only so many hours you can drive in a day. He said, I would sleep in the parking lot in that truck. He said, I done that. Um, I forgot how long he said he done it, but he said, I done that. He said, I got to the point I went from making 500 a week to I started making a thousand dollars a day he said now you still got your expenses your tires your oil changes your gas your maintenance he said and i did buy a used truck he said so i was just stacking 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 I bought another truck I, it was a guy i knew i let i put him in the truck got him over with the same load board so now i went from one truck at the grocery store to two he said boom i just went from there <clears throat> I got two trucks running. We compete with one another. My buddy get paid. I'm making the money. The truck's rolling. Everything good. He said, but then, you know, that kind of fizzled out. And then I got into another side. He got to another side where he was direct with the people. Like, the stuff he was doing was like third parties. It was, it was a middleman in between. and kind of cutting the money a little bit, but he was still making money. With the next venture, he was in control of the loads and he was in control of the money. He said, and it just went up from there. He said, I went from two trucks to three to four to five and it just kept going up you know and the guy and it was interviewing and was saying well man how did you how, uh was you pay, paying cash for all of it? he said no i wasn't paying cash for all of it he said as i pay one off i buy another one he said oh i just buy another one without paying one off he said but i 
He said the same guy that let me use his trailer, the same guy that hooked me up with the load board, was the same guy that helped me get financed to buy my first truck. And they are a finance company. And when they seen that I paid my first truck off and then I bought a second one and everything was on time, they was willing to give me that third one, but you got to come with a good down payment. He said, so I've always used them. He said, I went from buying one truck at a time to two to three. He said, I don't buy new. Some of them be maybe like three to four years old. I was buying them like that. And the interviewer was asking him, he was like, well, man, what's your revenue? How much you making? And the guy was a humble guy. He was like, look, I don't want to get into that, you know. He's like, I don't want people to get caught up in the money. But well, can you give us something? Can you, can you give us a ballpark? He said, well, I say this. I make six figures a month. The man said he makes six figures a month. If he just make a plain old 100000 in 30 days, it's 25000 a week. Yeah, you got 20-something trucks now, but that's a lot of money to come up on in five short years. Five years, you come up on that kind of money in five years. So I say this to say, use your full-time job as your business partner. Because you, you really your life can change in five years. It's a guy I work with, man. And I've been knowing this guy since I've been working out here on this job. He work all the overtime. He provide for his family. And he told me, he said, man, you know, I switched shifts two to three years ago just so I can get my CDL. He said, and I haven't done it yet. He said, I haven't done it yet, man. And I don't know, man. He said, I'm dragging my feet. And it, I just wanted to inspire him, man, and motivate him. I said, look, man. I said, I'm going to be honest, bro. I said, look how much time you give in this place. I said, you won't lose nothing getting up in the morning, going to class to get your CDL. You're not, you're not losing much. But it's worth it if you do it. I said, because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I asked him, I said, do you want to be a supervisor? Do you want to move up? He said, no, nah, I don't want to move up. I don't, I don't want none of the headaches. I don't want to move up. I just want to stay right here. I said, that's cool, but I'm about to show you something. I said, now, I don't want to move up. You don't want to move up, but this lazy joker right here want to move up. And when he move up, he going to work the mess out of me and you. Now, the reason I don't want to move up because I'm building my stuff right up here on the outside and I'm about to take off here shortly. What's your reason why you don't want to move up? He said, I know, man, I know, man. I just kind of been dragging my feet on getting this class started. And I said, man, we, we only get older. We're not getting any younger. You have to do something. Do something. You have to do something. I just want to encourage her, man. Because you don't have to. Man, look, use your job. Use your full-time job as your business partner. Just, just, just do it. Just do it. Use your full-time job as your business partner. And then it's going to come to a point one day where you're not going to need your business partner any longer. Signing out, Gibson's Law Service. I'm so tired. Catch y'all on the next one.